Today, I'm going to show you the number one perfect remedy for a condition called keratosis pilaris. It's also known as chicken skin or strawberry skin because it gives you this kind of like a goose-like appearance, these little bumps on the back of your arm. It could be on the thigh, it could be on the face, but there's these little bumps that are red and a little bit swollen. And we're going to talk about the potential mechanism of what's behind that and then what to do about it. There's a really awesome remedy for this that uh, you need to be aware of. Over 50% of the population has this condition. It's not dangerous. It's not acne, but it can give you uh, a little clue on what's going on on the inside of the body. I like to use symptoms, especially superficial things on the body to kind of pull the string to see what's behind it versus just treating the symptom. And then the underlying cause is now camouflaged. And now you're dependent on this treatment that keeps treating the symptom over and over and over. So if you understand the mechanism, you can get rid of the cause, then it goes away. So what do they know about keratosis pilaris? They know it's an excessive amount of keratin growing on the surface of your skin, primarily in the area of your follicles. And there's these little plugs that become swollen and red, and you'll see them as tiny little red dots, and most commonly on the back of the arm right here. Now, a lot of teenagers have this. I remember I had it growing up. I had no idea what it was. You know, at first I thought it was acne, but it's not acne. So I'm going to go through the kind of the mechanism of what's behind this. And then you can kind of isolate where your problem could be coming from, because there's multiple things that can trigger this condition. So the first thing is a vitamin A deficiency. Okay. When you're deficient in vitamin A, you can have a lot of skin issues. Uh, you can get acne. And uh, you may think, uh, well, you know, I'm eating enough carrots, so I'm getting enough vitamin A, so I should be fine. But carrots don't give you the active form of vitamin A, which is retinol. You get beta carotene and it has to be converted into retinol at a very small percentage. So the best source of vitamin A is from things like beef liver, fish, eggs, butter. And so it's a fat soluble vitamin that uh, also helps you see in the dark. So if you're consuming those foods, you also may be deficient because of another reason. In order to absorb vitamin A, especially the active form, you need a good liver. So if there's a problem with your liver, let's say you have a fatty liver, or you had your gallbladder removed, or you have a gallbladder problem, or for some reason you have this gut issue that you might be breaking down vitamin A, but further down in the digestive tract, you can't pull it in. It's called malabsorption. And it also could be that you decided to become a vegan and you no longer consume animal products. So you're trying to get your vitamin A from vegetable sources and good luck on that. Or it could be that you went on a low fat diet and you just don't consume enough of the foods that have vitamin A. All right. Another factor is androgens on the skin. Okay. That's a male hormone, but women have it as well. And there has been uh, a relationship between higher levels of androgen in females and getting this keratosis pilaris, especially if they have a condition called polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, where the ovaries are producing too much androgen, that's a male hormone, and that's affecting the skin, also hair loss and other problems. And one common cause of that would be high levels of insulin in the blood. They call that hyperinsulinemia. And so this hyper too much insulin in the blood problem can not just trigger androgens to cause this problem, but can directly affect your skin in a very negative way. There are so many different problems that occur when your insulin is too high, especially with the skin. I mean, you can get skin tags, you can get rough, old skin, but not just on the skin, but it happens on the internal part of your body too, inside your arteries. So there's a lot of issues with that. And so we have to recognize this high level of insulin connection too, and what can cause that. Of course, the things that you may already know, consuming a high carb diet, eating too frequently, doing a lot of snacks, but there's some other things that can also increase insulin, like high levels of stress that can increase cortisol, which then can increase insulin. And that is why people that go through emotional stress or chronic stress tend to have this keratosis pilaris. And also there's a higher risk of people that are obese, that have metabolic syndrome, that have this as well because of the insulin factor. And there's also one other really interesting 
trigger for high insulin. And that is consuming a lot of omega-6 fats, corn oil, soy oil, canola oil. It's in all the restaurant foods, fast foods. It's in a lot of foods that you probably already eat right now. Not only is it very inflammatory, but it can actually raise your insulin. It's fascinating because omega-6 fatty acids are essential fatty acids, and that is supposed to prevent or fix this problem. But what people don't know is you have to have the right ratios of omega-6 to omega-3. An average person is like way, way too high in omega-6 and way too low in omega-3, which is the opposite. It's like anti-inflammatory. So they don't make this distinction in a lot of the data when you read about this condition. They just give you the data. Oh, you just need to have essential fatty acids to help your skin. And they don't tell you the very important point of the ratios. The ratios are key. You don't want a high ratio of a lot of six to omega-3 fatty acids. And keratosis pilaris has a bit of inflammation in it too. And so we don't want anything in our bodies that are creating more inflammation. Now, the last point that triggers this condition is estrogen dominance. And this is why you see people who take birth control pills all of a sudden get these little bumps in the back of their arm or their legs, or when a female becomes pregnant, she may also develop that condition as well. So estrogen can play a factor and cause this problem. So what is the perfect remedy? Okay. Well, it would be something that combines all of these factors in one thing. Okay. And that thing is, you ready for this? Cod liver oil, not regular fish oil, but cod liver oil. Why? Because cod liver oil combines omega-3 fatty acids, okay, which will automatically help you lower the omega-6 ratios. Number two, it's really good for your skin. Three, it's anti-inflammatory. Four, it helps your blood sugars, which means it helps reduce insulin. And another thing about cod liver oil is it has vitamin A. It's one of the best sources of vitamin A, which will help create a normal amount of keratin on the skin. And on top of that, there's a bonus about cod liver oil. It has vitamin D in it. It's a good source of vitamin D, which is great for the skin. Vitamin D helps not only lower insulin, but it helps reduce inflammation. For those of you that don't like the, the cod liver burps, you can get them in a capsule. I'll, I'll put a link down below for more information on that. But somehow you need to find a high quality cod liver oil that you can use to reverse this condition. And also with your diet, make sure you correct some of these imbalances that we talked about, like really making sure you don't have all this omega-6 fats in your diet. Make sure you go on a low carb diet. Try like heck to manage your stress level and do things to improve your liver. But start doing cod liver oil and you're gonna notice within two to three weeks It'll start to fade. It'll start to get better and better and better. Now, if you haven't seen my video on the benefits of cod liver oil, because there's a lot of other benefits, I put it right here. Check it out.